is Joe Simons with Salt Strong, and I'm here with Captain Peter Deeks. He's a full-time captain. He is a guy who's won a lot of money in tournaments in the past, and he's also helped guide people like you, his clients, to multiple world records. And what we're going to talk about in this video are the three main mistakes and kind of misconceptions that most anglers out there make when they're going after trophy fish and even state records, world records. And number one, and this one hit me pretty hard because I've been on a lot of charter you know, boats myself with, with really good captains and other stuff. And number one was, was more active live bait fishing. Let's talk about that. Meaning active versus just kind of like chumming up the area and throwing a, a few lines out there and putting them in the rod holder. Yeah, sure. Live bait fishing isn't lazy man's fishing or cheating fishing. It's a way to catch those uncatchable fish, the 30 plus inch trout, the 45 plus inch snook. It takes you to that next level, but you can't just throw it out and stick the rod in the rod holder and expect to catch a bite. The biggest mistake I see people making is they throw out a bait, stick it in the rod holder, they talk to their friends, they have a sandwich. You're not allowing the bait to look natural. You have to fish the bait, even more so than a lure. You have to make the live bait look and act like he would if he wasn't attached to a line. And that's the angler's job. And it's so funny, you see everybody using live baits and they just throw it out there and expect the fish to just ravenously eat it. And the big ones don't. The big fish are smart. You have to pay attention, you have to focus, and you have to, you have to feed lines to the bait sometimes. Sometimes you have to put a weight on there. There's many techniques, but live bait fishing is really important. You have to fish the live baits. Yeah, it was really eye-opening just watching you, how you're fishing, because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, we're gonna be out there and you're, we're just gonna be sitting there waiting for a thump. And yeah, I mean, no. you were, I mean, you were more active than, than Luke and I sometimes when we're using artificials. It's sure. really, really cool. And, mm -hmm. and it makes sense though, because these big trophy fish, I mean, the world records, they're that big for a reason. They're smart fish. They're smart fish. Right? The, mm -hmm. the dumb ones will come up and aggressively hit anything, but those right. smart fish, they want that bait to look so, so, so natural. Right. And there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, just thinking about, you know, being like the bait and being, being like that big monster fish, what do they want to see, right? Yeah, I mean, they, some of these fish are 20, 30 years old. They've seen everything. That's a long time. They know what that bait is supposed to naturally do, and if it doesn't do that, they don't want to eat it. Yeah, let's and give like an example. Maybe even let's uh, let's talk about even just like the hook set, right? Sure. Okay, an example: the hook set. You have to pay attention when the fish bites. You have to know when the fish is on your bait. You can't wait for your rod to bend over. A big fish oftentimes will eat your bait and come charging at the boat. Your line stays slack, you don't know he's on there. But when that fish ate your bait, his lips are biting down on your line, your leader. So the hook is in his mouth and the line's coming out of his mouth and his lips are feeling that. Smaller fish, dumber fish, they don't care. A big trout, a big snook, a big redfish, he's going to feel that line and he's going to feel a little bit of the tension from the belly and the line in the water before you even know what's going on and he's going to spit that bait out. You don't even know you had a fish on there. But so often, I watch my clients, they're not paying attention. I'll, that fish will eat their bait, you see the line kind of move a little bit, and then he spits it out before they can set the hook. So you always have to be aware, pay attention, and focus on keeping that live bait looking natural. All right, now here is mistake number two. And mistake number two is all about matching the wrong stuff. And here's what I mean. So many anglers, according to you, when they're going after big trophy fish, they actually mess up this, and it's matching your equipment, your rod reel, your line, your, your hook, every single bit of the, the equation to the bait. And what most people do is they match it to the fish they're trying to catch, don't they? Correct, yes. Yeah, you want to match your equipment, hook to line, to rod, to reel. Everything needs to match the bait so that you can fish the bait effectively, whether it's longer casts with smaller baits or it's being able to rip the hook out of you know, a big mullet in order to set the hook into a big trout. So you want to match your gear to the bait you're fishing. It is so important. All right, so Peter, like, what, what is the biggest mistake when it comes to not matching up the right way? Oh, sure. Well, I see it so often in other boats or people I'm fishing around. I think it's kind of funny that people don't realize it, but they, they use gear that's way too big for the bait they're using. Their baits can't look natural. They don't look natural. They, they use 60 pound test leader and it's weighing down their little four inch finger mullet. 
you have to keep your baits looking natural and the only way to do that is with the proper gear and in some cases you caught i mean state record world record fish on really small hooks i mean stuff that people wouldn't even conceive of because, sure because you were matching all your equipment to the bait and not just the fish. Yes, you always have to worry about the bite first. Too many people worry about, well, how am I gonna tug in this big fish with a small rod? Get the bite first and worry about that second because without a bite, you're never gonna catch a fish. All right, this is mistake number three when it comes to catching those big trophy fish. And I believe you had an analogy the other day we were all kind of laughing about, but it made so much sense. And it was all about baits, right? We're not going after the, the elephants. The elephants eat peanuts, right? It's, it's what? No, we're fishing for lions. Lions eat big animals. We're fishing for trophy fish. You need to use trophy baits. And I think you'll be shocked, and I was shocked, at the size of some of these baits and you're like yeah we caught the world record the longest trout ever caught was on your boat yeah right and like the things that you're using to catch these fish with is like almost mind-blowing it's be, not a little small white bait i laugh all the time you'd be shocked at how big of a bait a a trout or a redfish or a snook will eat trophy fish eat monster baits yeah and and let's talk a little bit about a lot of these baits being on the bottom too that was another thing that I learned a lot through this this live bait mastery course. Sure. Because a lot of these bigger baits are going to go to the bottom where a lot of these bigger fish are, right? Sure. Yeah. Bigger fish, they tend to want to feed close to the bottom. They're a little lazier. They're not going to chase a little bait fish up on the surface. They want a big bait and they usually want it close to the bottom. So, so a big mistake I see a lot of people making uh, out there with live bait is, you know, they, they get, a, they black out their live well with a thousand you know, white bait, and sure. white bait's great. You can catch a ton of fish, yep. but if you're going after trophy fish, that's not the right thing, is it? It's not, no. I mean, that's a fun way to catch a number of fish. You can catch trophy fish. I've caught plenty of big fish on white baits, but you're not gonna target big fish with that. You need to isolate the big fish from the rest of the pack. You need to use baits big enough to only catch the fish you're after. Yeah, and the final part you said on this, which was another kind of aha moment, and it kind of goes against what a lot of people do out there, including us when we go live bait fishing is, you know, I, you, you said I'd rather have, you know, 10 really healthy, like the best perfect biggest baits out there than 200 or 300 in a, in a big live. Oh, boat. no doubt. Health of your bait is so important. You need, I would rather have five really healthy baits to put in the front of the fish that I want to catch than a hundred weak, soft, small baits. That's awesome, man. Anything else on that? I think that's it. Cool.